I think one of our greatest obligations as members of the press is to listen to people who don't have power because very often people without power have the most powerful things to say. I learned basically two things at Lehigh from the professors, uh, a commitment to the First Amendment and understanding what the First Amendment really entails and the fundamental values of uh, fairness and honesty uh, and accuracy. And those have been the two pillars of my career as well. And as the editor of the Brown and White, I started to learn management skills. So you needed to learn how to motivate people and you needed to learn, of course, how to be very careful, to be fair, to be honest, to be honorable, and yet to be committed to the core mission of our work. Some of Marty's really great traits, and I'll just say as somebody that was his managing editor, was just the ability to think uh, around stories and to really ask the right questions. I learned a lot from him that way and, and just listening to how he thinks about problems and to getting to a solution. When I got to Boston, I was coming from Miami, which is a big news town. Things are happening all the time there, crazy stuff. I was a little concerned that Boston might not be as uh, interesting as Miami was. That turned out not to be the case. We had the most powerful institution in Boston and in New England that was accused of covering up grave wrongdoing on the part of clergy. We assigned a group of uh, reporters, uh, the Spotlight team at the Boston Globe, to start an investigation. We were able to establish that this was a part of a pattern and a practice within the church and that there were dozens of priests who had been credibly accused of abuse and yet had been reassigned from parish to parish. You know, some people say, well, weren't you concerned that this was a really powerful institution in Boston and that you would receive all sorts of blowback? My view is that the more powerful the institution, the, the greater the obligation on our part, because the more powerful the institution, the more damage that can be done and, uh, and the less voice uh, people have to speak against it. Yeah, the, the Boston Globe's coverage really provided a model you know, other newspapers started to look at their churches and their dioceses. But then pretty soon, they started to look at other institutions of power. They all really harkened back to that early coverage that Marty led from the Boston Globe. I had the great good fortune to play Marty Barron in the 2015 film Spotlight. I think it takes a certain kind of courage to speak truth to power in the way that Marty has over the course of his career. He's one of the towering editors in, in American journals. When you think of those that have been immortalized, Marty's in that pantheon. Everywhere he's been, he's, he's made a contribution to making those newspapers great. He'll always be remembered as one of the great editors that we've had. His actions as an alumni are really meaningful. He's always made time to come up and speak with students. They come back thrilled. You know, they've just met one of the legends of their field. I've said that in order to be a good journalist, you need to have a soul and a spine. So the soul part is uh, that you really need to understand what journalism is all about, uh, what its core mission is. And the spine is that you need to stand up for that regardless of the pressures that uh, you have to bear. I think that that has carried forward throughout my career as well. Congratulations to the 2021 Excellence in Industry Award honoree, Marty Barron.